डॉक्टर सरला वेलकम टू मिलेट मैजिक वी आर गोइंग टू बी डिस्कसिंग द फाइव मोस्ट फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्क क्वेश्चंस व्हिच पीपल गेट इन देयर माइंड्स व्हेन दे बिगिन ऑन देयर मिलेट जर्नी इन द सिरी जीवन लाइफस्टाइल सो फर्स्ट ऑफ टुडे लेट्स डिस्कस पीपल ऑफन व्हेन आई मीट देम दे आस्क मी द क्वेश्चन दैट uh should we eat millets only in winter because we have heard that they have a tendency to create heat inside the body so let's uh burst this uh, myth yeah um it's been a problem for people to understand that these are staple food that means you can eat them all seasons it is that over a period of time people have forgotten how to cook this wonderful grains so it is the soaking because the grain is structured in such a way that there is a fiber and carbohydrate interlinked unlike rice or wheat where the layer is in the top and it's gone so there is no need to soak there is no need to do anything so it gets cooked but millets are wonderful grains where this wonderful structure is there so in bajra in jowar in kodo kutki kangni the structure is interlocked with the fiber so you need to soak the grain so that the fiber gets completely hydrated then you cook in like normal when you eat this kind of preparation soaked well and especially minor millets you need to soak them for long time. long time 8 hours or so because the grain is structured like that and the percentage of fiber is very high uh, rather right according to me not high um 8% to 12.5% in positive millets and 1.2 to 3.6 in the neutral millets And of course we are not bothered about the negative right. rice right. and wheat so it is this soaking enough time and cooking slowly and steadily removes all these problems so you can eat in winter you can eat in summer you can eat in rainy season absolutely no problem uh, these are wonderful grains that can be eaten and nothing will happen to you not only to you and the babies one year old babies you can feed them and even 108 year old people can just have it yeah but is even the millets <laughs> they can okay so just to summarize uh, millets can be eaten in all seasons they will be producing heat in your body that feeling of heat if they are not cooked well that is if they are not soaked well before cooking yes. so once you soak the grains for before making rice yes. for 8 hours if you are using flour at least 2 hours so whichever form of millet you are using make sure you soak so. them well before cooking then there is no question of producing heat in your body if you don't soak them they're going to pull out water from your cells after you eat them so that's when you are going to feel dehydrated and the feeling of heat in your body in fact uh, the problem is very very high in the consumption of meat products because there is gluten a protein whether you soak or do this or do whatever you want to do gluten is going to disturb your gut. intestines and yeah. gut and that's where the real heat comes from actually and what is the spelling of wheat w h e a t so <laughs> just remove the w you have heat all over so wheat is a grain which produces heat the real heat and really uh, dries up your intestine and causes constipation and lot of What issues uh, nutritional yeah. problems we are free to eat. people are free to eat that throughout the year but things <laughs> twice or thrice or 10 times before eating minutes that's actually not required you need to become your staple food and you can have them throughout the year yeah. so moving to the next question which is uh, of late in the market there are lot of multigrain uh, 
mixes which are available be it to mm-hmm. just make mm-hmm. a porridge or be it to yeah, make yeah, uh, yeah. roti chapati or even multigrain biscuits so how good are these multigrain items? actually they are not good the reason why they are there is because the flour mills that process the grains in a day at the end of the day they get free one ton of this multigrain mix what so whatever is left so to sell that right. utilize that that's free for the flour mills you see this is where the business comes from because it's free and then they can make some money and scientifically speaking each grain is endowed with a healing property of particular uh, part of our bodies so when you mix them the content gets diluted by each other so the healing property of each grain is totally getting lost so never ever eat multigrain eat single grain and you are blessed with the healing property of that particular grain so the five grains uh, we have spoken many times about their healing properties kodo millet bone marrow and blood uh, brown top millet uh, the whole digestive canal and little millet your um, heart reproductive. reproductive system and uh, foxtail millet your lungs and nervous system and uh, barnyard millet your soft parts of the body so when you mix uh, nothing is going to get healed or keep click uh, that the See. toxicity of the morbid waste is not cleaned up so this is the scientific reason why you should not mix them and uh, please eat them individually so that you are getting the healing capacity of each grain so two days each or three days each you can eat in rotation. in rotation and that's the way scientific way of eating the millets so to sum- summarize no don't use these multigrain mixes they are just uh, scamming you and charging much more than each one would cost individually and um, won't get the good health benefits ultimately we do want to get benefited our health to get better so if you're mixing all these grains there is so little of each one's fiber in what you're having in a meal that it's not sufficient to do any of the detox any part of the body doesn't get cleaned properly because there's so little of each fiber in it so eat the positive millets and the other grains also never mix them together so one complete meal at least have one grain it's ideal to have the same grain throughout the day that's when you'll get the most health benefits so please don't uh, fall for these advertisements and fall for the marketing techniques use them individually and that's when you'll get the most benefits yeah right? yeah you go back to your kitchen cook yeah. yourself so the third question which uh, i frequently hear from the people i meet is uh, now when we use the word millet the most uh, easily available and the most common now is i think ragi jowar bajra and uh, what about these millets what are they why are they called millets and what about we are talking mainly about foxtail kodo little so people are confused yeah, what do we yeah. use and yeah it's because uh, there are uh, groups of millets called major millets and minor millets the, the size of the grain is grouped as major because they are little bigger like ragi bajra jowar chena that's proso millet and makki makki is in north india very famous mm-hmm. corn or maize they call they are all actually millets because the structure of the grain though the content of the fiber is little less compared to these small five grains minor millets they are still structured the same way that means say ragi has 3.6 grams of fiber but structured the same way as it is in the millets the same thing with corn though corn actually is not known as millet because the size of the grain is too big so you don't call it millet but still it is basically the structure of the grain is the same and so you can group them as uh, neutral millets so we have grouped in our surijeevan lifestyle booklet these five grains proso millet 
silver millet, ragi, and bajra, pearl millet, jowar, great millet, and maize, the corn, maki. These five are neutral millets. And they have wonderful uh, health benefits in each different stages of our life. Uh, but if you are sick, uh, that you have diabetes, thyroid, this, that, all that, you are advised to use only the five minor millets so that you get out of your sickness. Which we call the positive, positive millets. And we call in South India, Siridhanya. Um, now the government has uh, graciously named them yeah. Shri An. So that's wonderful. So Shriyan, Shiridhanya, uh, you have to eat individually, soak them well, cook them well and enjoy your food and then be healthy all the time. So just to summarize, yes, Ragi, Jawar, Bajra are also categorized as millets. So millets are a huge group of more than like 10 the, There are many more, 200 millets may be there in the world. Parts of the world. Different kinds of millets which have been uh, used from centuries. So, all the grains which are small in size, so milliliter, mm -hmm. that's how the word millets has probably come about. So, all these grains are categorized as millets together, but within them we have a differentiation where the fiber percentage is what decides if it's a positive millet or a neutral millet. So, ragi, jowar, bajra, it so happened that. They are more easy to use because we usually use them in the flour form. Now, there is also another reason yeah. that in the millets, there is millets with husk and millets without husk. Yeah. And ragi, bajra, jowar are such grains that there is no removal of husk needed. Yeah. So, you can use them as a whole grain. Yeah. And what it means is that you can soak and tie it in a cloth, you see the sprouting. Whereas in or the positive yeah. millets, once you remove the husk, you cannot sprout. So, like paddy rice, we have these minor millets. Like wheat, you have these uh, neutral uh, grains. So, um, that is the difference. Um, so, the neutral grains over the past 100 years, they have some communities have held on to their use because of the ease yeah because they were easier to use yes. since they didn't you need machines and hull. so this way they were still held on to and they still are available when people talk about millets these are the first easily available grains uh, so north india calls them mota anaj mota anaj that so means we have chota anaj <laughs> since they are easily available uh, they are when you say millet, that's the first thing which will be available. But these are good for people who are healthy. So if you're healthy, you can have the positive grains and the neutral grains to maintain your health. But if you're already deceased, you need to stick to the five positive grains until you reverse your conditions so that you can heal soon, heal quickly. And after that, you can start including the neutral grains into your uh, daily routine or consumption but rice and wheat are still a no-no even if you are healthy we would say stick to the millets both positive and neutral grains correct yeah. correct okay uh, so another question which is very frequently asked is I am a thyroid patient say uh, we have heard a lot of news or rumors or uh, from other sources that People having thyroid should not consume uh, millets okay. and it will increase their condition or if we have no thyroid issues also if we eat them for a long time I develop thyroid this is a it's a it's a it's a big myth created by the media I guess <laughs> um, millet are many kinds as I told you earlier that one of these uh, English doctors visited a African country and then he found a few villages, women having goiter and then he asked them goiter meaning swelling, swelling over the thyroid gland yeah. not exactly thyroid gland in and ar I mean around the thyroid gland yeah. there is a edema. edema and some material deposited also goiter so the ladies answered we eat phony millet then he came back and wrote an article saying millets cause goiter. So, millets are goiterogenous. 
and then slowly it became as it is going to give thyroid issues. So, this is the real story that has happened. And we, in our uh, journey, we have healed thousands and thousands of thyroid patients by making them eat the positive millets, especially the little millet, which corrects the hormonal imbalance, has been excellent um, grain to cure all hormonal imbalances and regenerative systems uh, problems that uh, people are facing heavily. So, millets are not dietrogenous, millets are not thyroid issues. In fact, it is other way around, eating positive millets will heal you both goiter as well as <laughs> thyroid issues. So, just to summarize, you really do not have to worry even if you have thyroid issues, you can actually cure yourself, heal yourself and uh, by using the positive millets, especially little millet. So, that's just a rumor which has spread about to uh, as millets are gaining popularity, popularity, there are going to be such things which are created in people's minds a fear so that people hesitate to use millets. So, that's absolutely not true. Lots of people have cured themselves by consuming positive millets. So, please feel free to be assured yeah, millets sure. will give you health. Yes. Okay. And the last question, uh, of late we have been, not re really millets, but a uh, part of the city driven lifestyle, we have been asking people to use the bull driven oils instead of the refined oils which are available in the market. So there are lots of uh, people now coming up in the cities itself having uh, small machines and extracting oils and cold pressed oils have become very popular. So, what is your stand on these cold pressed oils and how are they rated amongst the refined oils, cold pressed oils and what we are saying bull driven oils. So, what's the difference? Of course, bull driven oils are the real oils. I mean the best uh, for your health and uh, to in fact correct many of nervous disorders and uh, basically hormonal imbalances and wherever the soft fat material is the constituent of your uh, part which you have problem with. The oils will come into picture to heal you. So, you need the real oils, real fats are available in our um, vegetarian oils uh, like seeds are there, thill oil, I mean sesame seed, safflower, groundnut, coconut, all these oils are wonderful. Then, use in the machines, the RPM increasing minimum of 10 they have to use to pulverize the seeds and get the oil from. What it does is it violates the STP, standard temperature and pressure rule. You are increasing both temperature as well as pressure at the same time. So, what it does is that oils have got cis trans double bonds or some of the oils like groundnut oil has got resveratrol, a most wonderful anti-inflammatory, anti-aging, anti-fungal, anti-bacterial, anti-cancerous, you name it, you have it there. So, what will it happen? What will happen to this wonderful chemical is when you do it in uh, high RPM in machines, they get polymerized in a wrong way and lose the, the health, health benefit. And the same thing with the different oils, with the cis trans uh, bonds, so the switching on and off, you lose the nice wonderful capacity of healing from each oil. So, going to bull driven oil, you only have pressure and not temperature increasing at all. And that is the reason why original, cold, original cold, 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 that is the real cold pressed. Of course, the marketing people, but I do want to give credit to this cold pressed oil when you compare it to this refined oils where a lot of <laughs> meals and everything is at too much temperature, pressure and some refined uh, mineral oils being mixed, all these nonsensical things. So, I would certainly say cold pressed oil that are really done in front of you even in the machine is better than the refined oils that we are getting in bulk, bulk in, in the market. But the real oil is the bull driven oil and at any given point of time for anyone 
in any part of uh, your lifetime, bull driven oil is the best and we have lost that culture and it is high time. Each and every doctor and nutritionist recommend bull driven oil so that we get back our culture and we make our villages wonderfully self-sustainable because we can make things happen and our bulls are safe, our cows are safe. It's, it's a wonderfully uh, woven, uh, holistic way of living. So, oils are part of our... But I've read some of the system, oh, oils are bad, oils are bad. I mean, that's ab absolute humbug. You need oils all through your life. In moderation, they are wonderfully health-preserving materials, God's given materials. So, never ever go away from oils, but choose the right processed oils and that is bull driven oil. So, just to summarize, again, uh, we have the notion that all fat is bad fat, which is completely not true. And uh, cholesterol, which deposits around our heart and our vessels, is actually being made but in your glucose. By the liver, when you are having too much of glucose in your blood, that is when we eat sugar, when we eat rice, when we eat wheat, the glucose in our blood just suddenly spikes up and your body to manage that increased glucose load will convert it into cholesterol and that is what is getting deposited around your heart. And, and that's what is getting bad rap. <laughs> yeah, that's what's causing heart attacks and strokes, etc. So, uh, what you consume the oil that's not going to go directly and get deposited in the vessel so even if you have uh, high cholesterol eat millets to set right your glucose balance the fiber will help clean your internal cholesterol deposits and please do use oils uh, for cooking oilless fatless cooking is also not good because your nerves need to get regenerated regularly which happens only when you are having good fat in your body they have a lot more roles to play. I'm just mentioning a few. So, bull driven oils are the best for your health. So, do try to. Sesame seed oil, um, Niger seed oil, groundnut oil, coconut oil, mustard oil. All these are wonderful locally available, locally grown seeds, oil seeds. You please use with Ghani bull driven oils. They are the best. Wonderful. Enjoy your meals. So the more the variety you use, the better. So, so many <laughs> listed. So, the more the variety you use, the better for your health. So, yeah, do make use of these wonderful substances which are uh, in our, and around us God gifted substances to better your health. Yeah, so we've answered uh, five most frequently asked questions which we come across, but I'm sure there will be a lot more uh, which come up in your mind when you begin this journey. So, with the expanding family, I think Millet family, with the awareness growing, so many more new people joining us in this journey. So, we're happy to welcome you all and that's why we thought of this video. So, do drop your questions in the comment section below and we'll try to answer them in the near future. Thank you.